Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4. First, First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 1 says, The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Kami, Or, and Shubal. That's our main text for the day. But this morning, I'm here to encourage someone that enough of the murmuring and enough of the complaining. There's every reason for us to murmur. There's every reason for us to complain. But I say that it's time for us to change our songs. Romans 8, 35 says, What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is it tribulation, distress, nakedness, peril, or sword? That whatever it is, nothing will separate you and I from the, from the word of God, from the love of Christ in Jesus' name. And you know, it's very natural to complain. It's very natural for us to murmur. That's what we're used in the, in the, old, um, the, the old King James. And if you go back to your Bible in the very beginning, even the children of Israel, they did complain. They murmured because they were tired of what they were going through. They were just exhausted. They were overwhelmed. And I know that it's, I mean, they were frustrated. And many of us too, we have the reason to complain. We are not. We're just discouraged. We are dismayed. We are doing all that we know how to do. All of a sudden, the bills are piling up. We can't even pay our mortgage or our rent any longer. The car note is there. And in fairness, you got a very simple car. And the car note is less than 200 But it's still a challenge for us to pay that bill. And in spite of that this morning, I'm saying no more murmuring. No more complaining. Because God wants to put a new song in our mouth. You know, and there was a woman in the Bible. If you go back to the book of Genesis 29. A young lady, right from the time she got married, the Bible records that she was unloved. Right from the very beginning, can you imagine? I mean, I tried to, and I thank her because I know I'm loved. But how can you be unloved right from the very beginning of your marriage? Let's turn our Bible to Genesis 29. Genesis 29. And the opposite of being unloved, or the, the, opposite, no, the opposite of love, is not really unloved, it is being hated. But I guess the Bible was just being very subtle to use that word unloved. From verse 31 of Genesis 29. It says, When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore his son, and she called his name Reuben. She was unloved. So now she had the first son and called that son Reuben. And she, um, the Lord, she said, The Lord surely looked on my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. She thought, Okay, I will stop complaining. I will have a son. I have a son now. Maybe my husband will love me. She was still hoping that my husband would love her. And you know, in those days, I can imagine somebody like me who has three daughters, what they would have done with me. It was a big thing then to have boys. So she thought, now I have a son. My husband will love me. But that did not work for her. She had the second child again, and she was still unloved. She still gave that child a name, hoping that, okay, it is there. Then she conceived and brought that child called Simeon. That this time, maybe my husband will come and be attached to me. She didn't have that still. She had the third child. Same thing happened. But I believe that she now realized that it was time for her to change her song. She had the fourth child. If you look at it in verse 35. And she conceived again and bought a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Now I will praise the Lord. She had tried all kinds of excuses. All kinds of murmuring, it didn't work for her. But she now realized that I better just forget about all these things and start praising the Lord. I don't know what it is, but you and I will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. And as I entitled you for this message, it is called, I will praise you, O Lord. And I don't know how you came in this morning, but my prayers are you and I will stop. Even at times it's difficult to say it out. But right inside us, we're very, very bitter. And we, can, we just begin to wonder, why are things going wrong? And as I was kind of putting this together, I remember a, I mean, somebody came in a few weeks ago to the U.S. and said to us that many times when the geo is about to pray, like his own personal prayer or praying with the ministers, this man of God said that he will actually go and stand very close to the geo. That what is the secret behind this man, all that he's doing? Until that man said it, I didn't even give it a deep thought that 
all you have to do to stay with the geo is all that either saying i praise you lord i magnify you lord i thank you that the geo will stay there for 10 15 minutes and all this man is doing is just praising the lord and if you've ever been under his mission either when before he starts ministering he will give praises to the almighty god i mean i was preparing this and it just came back to me so what does praise do when we praise our god what does praise do? And we Pentecostals, we are notorious for praising God. And most of us came to church because of the praise and worship. But this morning I say that that praising God is more than the tradition. It's beyond just singing. It's beyond the feeling that we go through. So Judah says that, I will praise the Lord. But I want to tell you that when you praise the Lord with your heart, something happens. Somebody must have been wondering, why is that main text a text? Because if you look at that text, it doesn't, have, it doesn't make any sense to anybody. Am I right? It doesn't make sense to anybody. I don't know what is wrong with me and names in the Bible. They say what is in a name, but I receive a lot of things. What is in a name? Bible records that the sons of Judah were. So I can say that praise, the sons of praise, or the result of praising God, are Perez, Hezron, Kami, Hor, and Shobal. Before I take my seat, what are these five sons? What do they mean? Let's start with the very first son, Perez. What does Perez mean? Our travel agent, his name is Perez. But I wonder if he knows that that's what, what the name means. Let's turn our Bibles again to Genesis 38. Genesis 38. I think it's the verse 29, 30, 38, 29. What does Perez mean? Verse 29 says, then it, it, then it happened as he drew back his hand and his brother came out unexpectedly and she said, how did you break through? Perez means breakthrough. As you are praising God and you praise him with all your heart and you can break through in prayer, in, in breakthrough in praise this time around, the almighty God will break forth for you. But what happens, we give up very easily. But we are saying that praise can lead to a breakthrough. And as you are breaking through in your praise, the almighty God will break forth for you in Jesus' name. So that's what I'm saying. No more complaining. For God to touch you, why not just try to touch the almighty God? Many of us are guilty of this. I myself, we can spend hours on the TV. Mine is my laptop. I can play games. I can do all kinds of things on my laptop. Can you just imagine that every day, just say one hour, all I want to do is to praise the Almighty God. As you are praising God, and you are breaking through in praise, God will break forth for you. I don't know what you are going through, but I tell you that it's more than the singing. In that your closet, just worshipping your God, praising Him, the first one you will get, that you will break forth in Jesus' name. And we have examples in the Bible. When Gideon was going to fight in the book of Judges, they had a lot of army, just with 300 men. They went with trumpets. They went with all kinds of musical instruments, praising God, and they caused commotion in the enemy's camp. David was known for what? For praising and worshiping his God. And the psalmist says that, with my lips I'll praise him. I will sing forth your praise. No more complaining. I know things are hard, but let's praise God. Let's challenge him. And as you are breaking through in praise, the Almighty God will break forth for you in Jesus' name. And we know that here's a new thing we can do. We cannot afford to keep quiet. Perez has to be born in our lives. Perez will be born in our lives in the name of Jesus. I don't know what your instrument of worship is. All of a sudden, it's hanging down because you are weak, because you are discouraged. My sisters and brothers, it's time for us to rise up and take up that because we're breaking through in Jesus' name. Again, the second child was called Hezron. Hezron, Hezron, what does it mean? Hezron means courtyard. It was a courtyard that had walls around it as to praise the almighty God. He will build a wall of protection around you. You don't have to fight your battles. So when you are praising your God, not only will you be, get your breakthrough, there will be a wall of protection all around you in Jesus' name. You know, think of the three Hebrew boys. They were in the furry furnace. 
But they kept on praising to praising God over there. Right in the middle of your fire, of your challenges, keep on praising God. He will appear for you. He will raise that stand up for you in the name of Jesus. Even though you are there, you, are, you, you perceive there's danger all around you. And I tell you, at that point of no return, but with the Almighty God, we raise that standard all around you. The wall of protection will be around you in the name of Jesus. That fairy fun has become a place of victory for you in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is to focus on the Almighty God. Taking of foundation stones, praise itself is a foundation stone that you have to lay this month in the name of Jesus. Once again, Perez is about breaking through. His rod is your wall of protection. The third child called Kami. What does that Kami mean? It's vineyard, vineyard, a gardener, that you'll be fruitful, there'll be production. So not only are you breaking through, as you are producing, you're going to increase in your faith, you're going to grow your devotion, because you are worshipping your God, there's no way God will speak to you. You will have the divine understanding, things will come fresh onto you, as in that place, because Kami means vineyard. So you're going to be fruitful. You're going to grow. It's like the way you, where you have the wine. You know what happens? There's production going on there. So as you're there praising God, there's growth in you. Physically, not all the big ones, but just think about it, right? There's going to be fruit for you in your faith, in your work with Christ. And there'll be freedom because there's spiritual lifting. You'll feel light as you're praising God. Think about it. When you are actually worshiping God, you forget all the all things happening around you. You can focus and hear from God. If only you and I would just stay and remain focused on the Almighty God.